test conductor job crack. T minus one minute, 30 seconds, and counted. All systems are go. About 90 seconds away from the launch of Space Shuttle Discovery on her final mission. T minus one minute, 10 seconds, and counting. The booster joint heaters are being deactivated at this time. T minus 48 seconds, and we're transferring to orbiter internal power. Discovery is now running on uh, three onboard fuel cells. Coming up, we want to go for auto sequence start at T minus 31 seconds. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Discovery's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. 20 seconds. The sound suppression water system has been activated, protecting Discovery and the launch pad from acoustical energy waves. Go for main engine start. We have main engine start. Two, one, booster ignition, and the final liftoff of Discovery. A tribute to the dedication, hard work, and pride of America's space shuttle team. The shuttle has cleared the tower. Now making one last reach, the stars. by pilot Eric Bowen, and Mission Specialist Al Drew and Nicole Stott. Mission Specialist Mike Barrett and Steve Bowen. Discovery's three main engines are burning fuel at a rate that would drain an average swimming pool in about 25 seconds. The engines combined with the solid rocket boosters produce more than 7 million pounds of thrust. One minute, 50 seconds into the flight, we're standing by for separation of the twin solid rocket boosters. Discovery now traveling 2,695 miles an hour. Its altitude, 24 miles. Downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 29 miles. Booster separation confirmed. Discovery's guidance is now converging as the shuttle's onboard computers fine-tune the flight. minutes 25 seconds into the flight discovery traveling 3,189 miles an hour its altitude 37 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center 53 miles discovery now getting a boost into orbit from its twin orbital maneuvering system engines on either side of the shuttle's tail these two engines will burn for two minutes and 32 seconds Our two engine tau uh, we do have updated your no com mode boundaries and we did launch late into pain one our only pain the uh, contingency aboard boundaries will use our in-plane plus 230. Let me know when you're ready to copy the new press to ATO and press to Miko. Okay, copy all. Two engine tower is ready to copy. Into your press to ATO 11.9, press to Miko 15.4. Discovery can now make it to emergency landing sites in Europe should one of the engines fail, but all three engines continue to perform it as expected. Capcom Charlie Hoba updating the crew there with some uh, updated uh, time information due to the later than planned launch. Three minutes and 50 seconds into the flight, the shuttle traveling 4,700 miles an hour. Discovery, you are negative return. 
Discovery now traveling too high and too fast to return to the Kennedy Space Center in the event of an engine failure. But all three main engines continue to function as expected. The shuttle now traveling 5,200 miles an hour. This altitude 62 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 170 miles. Four minutes, 45 seconds into the flight, discovery traveling 6,200 miles an hour. It's altitude 66 miles. Downrange from KSC, 229 miles. Your inside mission control flight director Richard Jones and his team continue to monitor the progress of Discovery's flight. All systems are continuing to perform as expected. Discovery, you are pressed to ATO. Press ATO. That call from Capcom Charlie Hobai indicating that Discovery has enough energy to make it to a lower than planned orbit should one engine fail at this point. However, all three engines continue to burn as expected. Discovery, you are single engine ops three. Single engine ops three. Discovery's engines are now swiveling to roll the shuttle to a heads-up position to get better communication with NASA's tracking satellites. Discovery, your single engine Zaragoza 104. Discovery can now make it to emergency landing sites in Europe should two engines fail at this point, but the flight continues to go well. Six minutes, 24 seconds into the flight, the shuttle traveling 9,800 miles an hour. Its altitude 67 miles, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center 447 miles. We go BIM for you, nominal shutdown on all three, and Pinto, you'll be go for the plus X and go for the pitch. Go for the pitch. Good read, Jack. A call from Capcom Charlie Hoba indicating that Commander Steve Lindsay has a go to press to main engine cutoff as expected in about a minute and a half. Discovery, you are single engine press. Single engine press. Seven minutes, 15 seconds into Discovery's flight. The shuttle traveling 12,700 miles an hour. Its altitude 66 miles. Downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 615 miles. <coughs> Discovery's engine is now throttling back to keep the forces on the crew and the shuttle to three times that of gravity. The shuttle traveling 14,000 miles an hour. Less than 30 seconds to go in Discovery's power fly. We're coming up on main engine cutoff. Main engine cutoff confirmed. Space shuttle Discovery now in space. External tank separation confirmed. Commander Steve Lindsay will steer the shuttle up to the uh, forward portion of the external tank so that the umbilical well camera can, can capture some images of it. Discovery, we saw a nominal Miko one not required preliminary TIG for Ohms 2 3730. Welcome to you and your veteran crew back to space. Copy, uh, no Ohms 1 required 3730 preliminary TIG and uh, thanks a lot. Good to be here. Good deal, panel. We'll meet you in the post Ohms 1 tab. I have no idea. As we take a live look inside the shuttle flight control room here at the Johnson Space Center, we want to welcome you to NASA Television's live coverage of Discovery's final flight. We will have round-the-clock coverage throughout the entire mission, and of course you can always follow along on the NASA website at nasa.gov.